everyone in this video we are going to be discussing about the homeostasis and remodeling of the bones okay as you know in the adult skeleton the bones appear to be static but actually they are constantly turning over in the tightly regulated process which is known as remodeling okay so actually the remodeling takes place at a microscopic locus which is referred to as a bmu what is a bmu bmu is a bone or you can say the basic multicellular unit what is it it's a bone basic multicellular unit so this unit has the couple of the cells couple of activity which is by the osteoclast and the osteoblast now how this pathway is regulated first of all suppose this is an osteoblast or you can also call it a stromal cell and these cells have a receptor which is known as a rank ligand. What is this receptor named as? It is named as rank ligand. And on the other side, for example, this is the osteoclast precursor cell. Okay, it is the osteoclast precursor that is having in center the NK. NFKB right and this cell has a receptor which is named as rank okay and for the differentiation of this osteoclast into a mature osteoclastic cell what is needed the interaction between the rank ligand and the rank this is needed okay so what is needed that this rank ligand would get bind to this rank rank receptors on the osteoclast so that would initiate the differentiation of the osteoclastic precursor cells into the osteoclast and this would do what this would help in the bone resorption process okay now what other types of factors are responsible for the regulation of this bone resorption or the bone formation so we have opg which is referred to as a osteoprotegrin so it is osteoprotegrin okay and this basically does what it interferes with this attachment so it wouldn't allow the rank ligand to bind with the rank receptors so in this way there would be no differentiation and if there's no differentiation it means that there would be no bone resorption so it means that it would favor the bone formation okay so so far what are the factors which we have this uh, which we have discussed which are regulating this pathway of the homeostasis and the remodeling so the first one is the rank ligand which is present on the osteoblast right and then we have the rank receptor which is present on the osteoclast precursor cells and the interaction between these two would help the differentiation of the osteoclastic precursor cells into the osteoclast and then the third thing is that we have opg which is referred to as osteoprotagonin which is basically interfering with the binding of the rank ligand to the rank receptor and how this differentiation occurs so basically this is this factor nfkb which is responsible for the differentiation and it is stimulated when the rank ligand and the rank they both gets bind together okay when they both get bind together so this would stimulate the nfkb and this would do what the differentiation of these cells right and now uh, the fourth one is another factor that is being released by these osteoblasts and what are they they are the mcsf what is it it is a monocyte colony stimulating factor and this factor also helps the osteoclast precursors to form or to produce a functional osteoclast it means that so far we have only one agent that is stopping the differentiation of these cells while all the three uh, factors they are basically promoting the differentiation and they are helping the bone resorption okay 
now how these uh, the bone resorption and the bone formation are favored so it is determined by a ratio that is known as the rank to opg ratio all right in which the more is the rank factor the more is the differentiation and the more is the bone resorption all right but the more is the opg uh, it is gonna block the differentiation so it's gonna favor the bone formation all right so now we're gonna see that what are those factors which are responsible for increasing the rank or which are responsible for increasing the opg so let's see so in this example which are increasing the rank we have the pth the parathyroid hormone we have interleukin 1 we have glucocorticoids we have the glucocorticoids and what are those factors which are increasing the opg so these factors are the bmp and we have the sex hormones which includes what it includes the estrogen and we have the testosterone all right now the peak bone mass is achieved in the early adulthood okay it is achieved in the early adulthood after there's a cessation of the skeletal growth and this is okay so after the cessation of the skeletal growth and this is also determined by some factors and these factors are for example we have a polymorphism in the vitamin d we have the lrp 5 6 receptors we have nutrition we have the physical activity right now it will be a little bit detailed for you but let me discuss it with you that these receptors this lrp5 and 6 receptors uh, what is the function of them so basically uh, we have a wnt protein okay and this protein stimulates these lrp5 and 6 receptors right and these receptors are present where they're present on the osteoblastic cells all right so when the WNT protein would stimulate these receptors, this is going to produce the OPG, right, which is the osteoprotagonin. So now coming back to the topic, which is the peak bone mass. So as you know that in the fourth decade, what happens is that the resorption exceeds more than formation, okay. So there is more resorption of the bone as compared to the formation of the bone. So that is why that leads to the decline in the skeletal mass. So there is a decline in skeletal mass in which decade? In the fourth decade. Alright. So I hope this is clear to you. And in the next video, we will be discussing about the congenital disorders of the bones and cartilage. So thanks for watching.